Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. <laughs> <Welcome. Hello. laughs> we are so excited for this live. I've been pumped for like the last week since we organized it. So uh, <laughs> thank I, was you. I was about to get up, but then I remember I've got no pants on, so I can't really <laughs> stay. Last okay. oh, no, pants on. No, sorry, I should rephrase that. I've got pants on, just not like appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I feel like you need we're to show us what pants you're wearing. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for taking the time out to come and do this with us. Um, for those that don't know, Nadine is a super close friend of Ash and mine, and she's just so inspiring. And to be honest, we just thought, you know, she is just amazing even for us to um you know to chat to and oh just yeah crazy i'm not gonna sit here and bore everybody though i really want you to introduce who you are and um tell us a little bit more about you and the hats that you wear every day all right well hi everybody and thanks so much for tuning in um, first of all, a big thank you to both of you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. It's, it's nice to be talking to my friends on a different forum. It's just now, instead of over the phone or at work, it's now just um, through our phones, which is nice. Um, anyway, so hi to everybody. Um, I'm a bit of an interesting case. Hats, yes, I do wear a few, but I want to pre-phase something all together as well. I think we all wear lots and lots of hats whether we like it or not um and whether we realize it or not i think we all do you could look at um ash lane you could look at ash harris sorry ash brown now um <laughs> wearing a hat um it's just exactly that we're on two we're all on different journeys and, and the number of hats we wear are all sort of pertinent to each of us um i guess for me um i'll rattle off my couple that i have and i might be here for a short period of time um <laughs> so if you don't follow me already uh i am in the military full time and i have been with them for the last 11 going on nearly 12 years um i've been really fortunate to have had a pretty pretty awesome military career and sorry that is with the royal australian air force so I'm an emergency nurse with them. I've, again, I've had an incredible uh, exposure and experiences that I truly believe you cannot find elsewhere. Um, and that is certainly what the Defence Force has done to me. Um, so that's been that, <laughs> that hat that I wear. Um, on the side, I'm fortunate to uh, work for Ash Brown and her husband or her now husband, Ray Brown at their F45 training studio in Labrador. I'm very proud, very humbled to be one of the coaches there. I freaking come alive in that place. It's not funny. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it is also one of the places that I um, enjoy as part of my training regime as well. So I get in there maybe a couple of times, oh, two to three times a week to train myself. Um, and likewise, it's definitely become a family affair in terms of my husband, my little one. We all get in there and we all get in and train. Um, what else? I am fortunate enough to be sort of assigned and aligned with a few companies and, and certainly with my online stuff and fitness influencing, I've been fortunate to be affiliated with some brands, which I'm very um, proud to be a part of as well, the likes of XPC, Right Away and the like. Um, what else? What have I forgotten? Oh, I am director and founder of my own little online coaching and mentoring business, which I absolutely adore. Again, this is something that I just take on as my little baby. I, I coach and mentor people at close range, really closely. I work really, like, again, I can, I can pick and choose as bad as that sounds, my clients and, and be able to mold them and work together with them to find their best self. So that's something that I truly love doing. I try to have a social life, but I don't know if I'm very good at that. But I think <laughs> Um, saving my best to last. I'm definitely a very proud, very devoted wife and mum to my family and, and that becomes my number one hat that I most enjoy wearing. So that's me in a nutshell, I think. Have I forgotten anything, girls? No, I was about to say, I was about to say, what about your little boy? <laughs> you, left the, you left the best to last. Best to last. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> I guess most people um, that we speak to, they, you know, they say things like they struggle working just, you know, having a, a child or a baby or, you know, a husband or a wife or whatnot. How do you sort of cope, you know, keeping that number one priority being your family and also doing all these amazing things that you're out there doing? Yeah, oh, look, um, again, struggling is something that I do often, but sometimes you can just do <laughs> 
struggling. Um, yeah. But but in saying that, I'm someone that enjoys, strives, and almost thrives of a high tempo, go get it kind of lifestyle. So you know, there's times when I go, I've got to, I've got to, you know, strip it all back. I've got to have some time off. But even then, I'll just load it with all these other things. And I've just come to realizing that that's just how I operate, and that's how I operate at my best, and that's the type of tempo that I love. And 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 I was talking about on my social media recently that. Um, sometimes for me, and this is my own opinion and how I operate, as I said, sometimes being too balanced or, or stripping everything completely back will actually see me less productive. And again, that's mm-hmm. something for me. Uh, whereas if I go along this sort of, you call it eustress, EU stress, um, if you go along this nice sort of equilibrium of good, healthy stress, productivity absolutely soars. And that's something that I work off um, myself. Again, like, you know, people will only have, or I shouldn't say only, will have just that one job or just have that one child. But I like to think that, um, again, we're all wearing our various number of hats. And whether you have one job or six or six kids or one, it's all relative to each of us. Yeah, and I'm sure both of you will agree with me. And certainly mum's watching this that, um, you know, what we can make work in the time that we have, and we're all given that same 24 hours, whatever works for you, that works for you and stick with that. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Totally agree. You know, um, there's so many women that we come across. You know, and, and I guess it's it comes down to your you're used to and what you're what you're accustomed to. You know, like um, you have been a, a busy go getter woman, you know, for most of your life. Um, whereas I, I look back on my my pre child days, and I thought I was a busy person, and I wasn't. So I guess it comes. Down a lot of, of what you're used to as well and yeah like you said we've got all have the same 24 hours in a day but I mean could you let us into a little bit more of like what a day in your life looks like, like from the moment you get up to the moment you go to sleep what <laughs> uh again so it involves so in order for me to wear my hats wear them to the best of my ability, still be a present parent first and foremost. It involves getting up super early, but I love that. And I, I'm somewhat, you know, people are like, oh, I'm not. But I, I encourage people to become morning person or morning people. What that means is by doing that, you are just opening up your opportunities for doing more, seeing more, being more in a 24-hour period. And, yes, I go to bed early, like at the end of the night. But what else are we going to do? Stro- you know, scroll on Instagram. You know what I mean? Like I think it's being discerning of your time and being able to go, right, where can I maximise um, all the things that I need to do in a, in a time period that I can make it work? And, again, whether you're a shift worker or, or you've got your little ones, it's trying to find those pockets of opportunity to wear those varying hats that you can do the best that you can. So I guess my, um, as I said, first things first, I get up super early to get in my training first and foremost. So normally... Um, you know, people go, how do you get up to train and, and, and why why so early? And so for me, part of my motivation is if I, I know that if I sleep in and press snooze on that alarm clock, which don't get me wrong, there's plenty of times that I want to, I know though that that's my window of opportunity. That is my pocket of opportunity right there. If I miss it, sorry, but all my other hats mean that I can't do that later. Or if I do, something's going to give later, whether that be family time and that's non-negotiable. So I'm like, right. If I don't get up right now, and I literally like bat myself, <laughs> up another five minutes, I'll get up, woman. Because if you don't, you're gonna regret it. And don't get me wrong, there's been times I've gone, no, nah, I'm gonna sleep. And by the time nine o'clock comes, not only do I feel like crap because I haven't trained and haven't energized myself, and so I haven't sort of started my day on a high, but later I regret it every time. So I remember that at any moment that I I go to go, no, nah, I'm just gonna sleep in. So anyway, training, I go off topic. <laughs> Um, then, then, I, um, think, I think that was really good because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people say to us, I just can't get up in the morning. But thinking of it like that is your only opportunity. And for most people, yeah. it is. If they miss it, it's like they've missed their day of training. So I think it's cool to know too that someone like yourself also struggles with it. And, you know, there are times where you're like, I don't want to get up this morning, you know, whatever it might be, but pushing through that and, you know, yeah, thinking about your non-negotiables for the day and knowing that if you do miss that opportunity then, you know. It potentially won't be there later. Yeah, or something's got to give and that's five down and and then where it's got to give, you're then just annoyed because your day hasn't gone. Exactly, yeah. 
you've you know something that was then going to be some downtime is no longer downtime because you chose yeah. to sleep so yeah. I think that for me like that sometimes you know you can be motivated you can be disciplined you can do all these things but sometimes it's just going if I don't do that yeah you know, I know what that's going to then breed for me later um yeah. so that's that and so then with the RAF um so I we live on the Gold Coast for those that don't know and then I am posted to a unit in Brisbane so I have to do the commute so I can spend up to four hours a day on the road like that's pretty bad scenario sometimes it's only three hours but three to four hours a day um that I can be on the road traveling then I get to work um and then I can work for the day or whatever sometimes I'll be able to sort of do my own personal admin in that time um if I'm fortunate enough that so I'm a nurse there so if I've got the time or the ability to then during my lunch break go to the um military gym then I'll quickly smash a little quick session in there and again it's only during my lunch break so it's a you know, 30 minutes, quickly get my shit in, quickly put my uniform back on, my hair back in a bun, and then I'm back to work again and do the same thing in reverse and lay at home. I guess, um, again, there's that pocket of opportunity that I'm talking about. I could either say, right, this sucks, I'm spending four hours on the road, what a waste of my freaking time that I'm doing that, or vice that, I can turn it around and go, I can use this time wisely. So what I mean by that, my mum's like, I have never spoken to you so much more. I love this community. <laughs> my to my parents, I tell them all the things about my how my day was. I can deload. I can do all these things. One, two, I can actually just be. I can have music. I can just chill. I can just drive. And sometimes that can just be a bit of me time. As crazy yeah. as it sounds, I'm like, you know what? I can sing. I can do car karaoke. I can do whatever the hell I want in this. <laughs> Three. What I've actually found from a business point of view is I can actually. I've made it work. So I've made my my phone calls I've made my consults I've made my mentoring coaching sessions unless I need to have my physical computer there with me or I need to look at spreadsheets or whatever if I'm just doing a call and I and it's just a part of like a mentorship or a um a consult I can do that on my way home as well so again going back to sort of other questions it's like you can look at the time that you do have and go that sucks or look at pockets of opportunity where you can make it work and fit with the rest of your stuff. So that's that. Um, then I guess there can be some days where it's a mangle of all of that in one. So I might get up, train, maybe take a couple of um, sessions at the gym, sorry, and then train, then quickly race home. It's just manic, isn't it? Then yeah. <laughs> get the little one ready. Then sometimes then day note goes trains and then, and then we'll, that into day can be like, see you, baby, we love ya. And then we'll go to work and then, yeah. So, again, we just make it work, girls. We just do the best we can with what we have uh, and it seems to be working for us. So, yeah, cool. We, I talk about weekends. Weekends are like my – so that's Monday to Friday, yeah. Monday, Friday, hectic, hectic. But Saturday and Sunday, baby, she's, she's down tools. She is <laughs> like – you know, like we'll definitely train. So, as I said, the Saturday we'll – you know, we'll train as a family, we'll get in some exercise, we'll get outside, enjoy enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the beautiful life that we get to live. Sunday, a bit of a prep day, you know, like most of us fitness people, yes, I, I prepare my week because if I don't, again, similar to what I said, it sort of rolls into a, in, into a, uh, a week that's just not fluid and I need that fluid movement. So um, Sunday's a time to relax but also a time to sort of get things prepared for the week ahead and, and it works. You can do that and... Um, Again, it sort of speaks volumes on the other end when the week comes. Yeah, awesome. Um, just while I was seeing people pop on there, if you guys have any questions, we're running through a few questions with Nadine, but feel free to comment them um, and hopefully we'll see them pop up. I think we'll be able to um, and we can answer them. I know people listening in. So um, you are always so positive. Ash and I know that, I guess, firsthand and a lot of your followers and whatnot can see that through your social media and whatnot. But how, how do you keep so positive, you know, when days may be, may be hectic, like you said, you're running around doing stuff. How do you keep that positivity in your life, I guess, in all areas? Yeah. Um, look, sorry, I just got a message. Um, positivity, <laughs> I, I really, again, um, I'm not always positive. Let's just get, let's get that straight right now. I think the people that seem to be positive all the time just can't be that way. How can you be on that high constantly? There are definitely times where I've been a negative Nancy. There's definitely times where I'm just one big complaining asshole and that's, um, that's okay. 
Um, <laughs> on the most part, though, if people, I think uh, whenever someone has described me, if I was to ask someone for some reason to describe me in a couple of words or someone would describe me in a couple of words, positivity will always come up. And I think that speaks volumes. But in saying that, it's not it's not always the case. Like you've got to, if it's a few things that I can say about it, it's, it's a lifelong journey of applying being a positive person. And um, if we can just sort of go, right, um, there's a few things surrounding positivity for me. And a couple of them are, first of all, letting go negative energy. And I've done this really well, especially in the last couple of years where I've literally um, been very careful and being very discerning of, of the people that I allow into my inner circle. And it's purely because of positive or negative energy. And I'm a firm believer whether you think it's um, like a crazy Asian hippie stuff or not, that when you, <laughs> when you steer towards positive energy, positive energy will sort of manifest. And when you steer towards negative energy, you just like we, we know it. It's just the way it is. You, you steer towards negative energy, negative energy will come. You say that that's going to happen, that will happen because you're telling yourself that that's the case. It's like where I almost think that, in my opinion, that we're hardwired to be negative people. It's just the society that we live in, but it's our job to turn that around. Anyway, um, I can go on about this. So I'll, I'll go back to I, <laughs> what I do and, and, the, and the few things. Again, as I said, it was that whole letting go thing. So... In the last couple of years, I've really, <laughs> I've really improved my whole. You know what? You can't fix everyone. You can't, um, you can't uh, change people's train of thought. You can love people from far, but it's really important to not let people's negative energies and negative lives then um, fall onto you. Starting to consume it. Does that make sense? I'm sure yeah. if you might have um, been in situations, I know I definitely have. Um, I seem to be the person that everyone comes to for advice and help and. Um, there comes a time in your life where you're just soaking in all this negative energy. There, as I said, um, sometimes it's just being like, all right, I need to let go of my negative environment, whether that's a workplace, whether that's friendships, whether that's people that are that are blood within your family that you need to just go, right, it's not about, you know, you're not cutting them off. <laughs> While sometimes I think I'm really cutthroat, it's actually just saving yourself and it's loving them from afar. That's all it is. And, yeah. and if that makes better to say that rather than saying I'm cutting them off completely but rather just you're loving them from afar and you're no longer letting them or allowing them to be in your inner circle I think that's really important so that's my number one letting go of things that no longer serve you and things that no longer actually provide you positive energy and you can feel it you can feel it when people are either on that positive chain or on that negative chain and I'm not talking like the the you're just having a bad day I'm talking when it's along a continuum where they're just negative all the time. So that's the first one. Um, the second one I, I often uh, sort of say to people is about um, challenging, challenging your train of thought. So sometimes when I'm uh, being negative, that's okay. I want people to understand that that's, it's okay to be negative or to have negative thoughts or to feel down and out, totally okay. There's, there's, it's like there's some movement that you have to be positive all the time. It's definitely not the case. It's okay to be down. It's okay to be out. I think the difference is is feeling it, acknowledge it. I always use those two terms with my clients. Feel it, acknowledge it, but tell yourself you're not going to stay there. Tell yourself you're not going to stay there. Staying there. I was talking to this to you about this, um, Ash Brown, the other day. You can wallow in self-pity. You can wallow in self-doubt and all of that stuff, but that doesn't get you anywhere. If you just go, all right, I'm going to feel through this emotion. It's okay. Cry it out. Do what you need to do. Acknowledge the emotion. This is a normal emotion that I'm feeling. However, I'm going to get myself out of the funk and do something about it now. So, um, so yeah, firstly, let it go. Secondly, challenge that emotion. So, you know, rise above it. Choose, choose yourself. You know, right, I'm not going up. I'm not going to let it get to me anymore. I've, I've felt my way through it, move forward. Um, the third one uh, that, I, that I talk about with people is actually that it comes down to choice or you can use the word attitude. Um, we're all adults and we have the choice to either wake up and go, today is going to be a shit day, that's our choice, or today is going to be a great day, that is also our choice. So yeah. whether you use the word choice or you use the word attitude, it all comes down to us and how we apply ourselves, yeah. And as I said before, it's about a lifelong journey. If you, if you um, think that being positive just sticks, we're on, we're on the wrong page. Once you're positive, it doesn't mean you just stop there. Oh, I'm positive now, so I'm just always going to be positive. 
person. Just, you know, like us, we go to the gym to train muscles. If we don't train those specific muscles, we don't use it, we lose it. It's the same thing with positivity. If you no longer practice a positive lifestyle, you will lose it just as fast. So it's about adopting a positive lifestyle. Not so much being like, I've got to be positive, but just incorporating things that make you happy, being around the people that make you happy and that serve you on a, on a vibration that actually goes, you know what, this is cool, this is what I like. And it's not so much of applying that I can – I can see positivity, but you can feel it. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It's so powerful. It's such a powerful tool, um, oh. practicing that positivity, isn't it? Like, yeah. um, what do they say? Practice makes permanent, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Yep. You've got to do it daily. Yeah, that's it. That's it. No, I love it. And it's, it's definitely something, as I was saying before, for some reason, people always just, if there's a way to describe me, positivity will come. And it's not that, or like positivity will come up in a, in a list of a few words. And, and I love that. Um, but I, 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 on that same token, I don't want people to think that I'm just always a positive, positive person. Um, you have to work on being positive sometimes every single day. And there are times when no matter how you look at things, cards that will be dealt, um, things that just prop up in life, that it is hard to see a silver lining from any of that. But if we can just find solace in the fact that maybe, just maybe at the end of a shit time, there might be something that leads to, then, you know, that might provide us a bit of support and a bit of guidance while we go through tough times. Totally, totally. I, um, I, I, as you know, just like jumping off topic just slightly yeah. though, um, as you know, there's a lot of mums, like you, what I've done actually is I've pinned the link in the comments. So if anyone doesn't know, Nadine is like a crazy mum inspiration. So follow her on Instagram. It is in the comments. Um, obviously, Ash and I, we talk to a lot of mums as well. And some one of the topics that always arises is, you know, like how do I, how do I, um, as a busy mum, you know, how do I train, um, how do I fit time in to do this, how do I juggle my life? Like if you had to give three tips to um, a mum that was looking for time to train well and I guess juggle their day-to-day -day life to make it easier, what would your top three tips be? Oh, that's so <laughs> top three. <laughs> um, uh, one and this, again, sort of overarches everything is being really realistic. Um, yeah. uh, we're almost in this high-functioning society where we've just got to be killing, like, every facet of our life. <laughs> and, you know, I think for those that have been following me for a while, a lot of the time I'm also just winging it. I can be as organised and prepared and all this stuff, but sometimes I'm just winging it. And when I finally let go of... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> When I finally let go of that whole I've got to be nailing everything 110% and that perfection, um, not perfection, but aiming to just be, you know, um, again, yeah, nailing every facet of your life. I think once I sort of went, okay, hang on a second, come to a happy equilibrium and when I was realistic with my approaches and how I was going about things, suddenly, whilst it doesn't mean that you're no longer shooting for the stars, it just means that you're realistic with everyday outcomes. So that's my first one, definitely being... Um, realistic with your tasks at hand um i something that i do on a daily basis is i i literally have an electronic diary so in my phone i should say um it's not an app it's not anything like that i actually use notes and i've just formulated a system that works for me and it's something that i um tell my clients or anyone that i come across like how do you organize your week it's it's a diary like i literally down to the hour and some people like diaries structured in weeks or days or hours whatever mine is so compact it's not funny but in doing that and whilst I am um, flexible in you know if, if that goes over time sure and then it can fall into the next category right but that allows me to go okay that hat is no longer on that is off put it away put it to a sleep until you come back again and that needs to be put back on I'm now walking in my door I'm now putting my mum hat on that is it computers not do you see what I'm saying so I think it's it, um, what that does, that diary and being able to dictate within reason but being flexible with the structure as well um, has helped me sort of figure out where I am up to in my day, what I'm up to next, and and it allows me to not spend eight hours doing something that should only spend two or that I've only allocated two hours to. Um, 
being able to sort of step by step see how my day is going is or how it's going to be planned for the week is serious key to me for some people diaries don't work um they don't look at them or they don't refer to them if i didn't have a diary i'd be a, i'd be a hot mess i'd be down and out <laughs> so if um if you're a diary girl or can start incorporating um you know whether it be alarms or things that prop up during the day so you can move on to the next task that you need to do um that's definitely something that i recommend in terms of juggling um life a little bit easier um i guess it stems my next one and i guess it stems off that is and i talked about it a little bit earlier on is scheduling what's negotiable and what's not so in my diary there's things that are just there's no left or right of arc of that you either do it or you don't. If you don't, it, if you don't, it's your fault, Nadine. If you do, well, good. And then there's things <laughs> like there's there's things that you just go, well, if that doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world, and I can flow that and move that into the next day or into another day, and it's not going to tarnish or or ruin anything that I've got in the plans or in projects at that point of time. So really, and and so really being able to again compartmentalize and go, that's my non-negotiable. That's my negotiable. And I think in that non-negotiable. It's putting yourself in there. So part of the non-negotiable might be reading your book. I don't read books. I'm not going to pretend I read books all the time. <laughs> really that. So, you know, my non-negotiable of me time would be, you know, going and training or going and getting my nails done or doing something nice for myself, going and catching up with friends. That's part of my non-negotiables. Some people would say that a negotiable would be you time. Uh-uh. That's a non-negotiable and you chuck that in the non-negotiable pile. Um the, the last one, and I think this is something that I probably am still learning to do, it's delegating and asking for help. Um, gone are the days <laughs> where, you know, I think, I think we're starting to pull away from it, but it's still something that us women hold on to, and particularly mums. We've just got to be seen to be doing it all. We've got to have the house in order. We need to have everything sorted, and if we don't, then we're a failure. I think we need to just stop and go part of being a good person, being a good wife, a good daughter-in-law, whatever the case may be, is allowing people to help you because in a weird way, I think it helps relationships because it's allowing them to come in and allowing, allowing them to help you and giving them that trust as well. And, and at the end of the day, people, people offer, offer help and we're the first ones to be like, nah, I don't need it. I know that more recently I have needed it. So take on the help that other people so freely give to you um, and, and don't, be, don't be discouraged to accept it. And, and if, if, accept, if people need that validation, then I want to tell people right now that I'm giving you validation to, to delegate tasks off and give it to other people so that you can concentrate on the things that you want to do and that make you better or that make you a better mum, wife, whatever the case may be. So they're, they're my three. No, that's this is awesome. <laughs> there's there's plenty more but thank you for sharing um those three with us that's all right so if we can kind of we know health and fitness is a massive passion of yours if yeah. you could give us maybe we'll go three tips as well or um maybe little tricks or hacks for some mums that are finding um time is a bit of an issue to you know whether it's eat well or get into their training and whatnot, three sort of tips to help them out, maybe starting off their fitness journey or just getting into a good routine with their you know, health and fitness. Um, first of all, this is something that um, – this is the question that I think any fitness professional or any health and fitness professional will receive on a daily basis. How do I fit it all mm -hmm. in? And I'm really um, – how do I say it? I'm really cutthroat with this because I'm like – how about if you want it? You either want it yeah. or you don't. Um, so I'm not going to fluff around on this subject at all. Yeah. Um, I, I like anything in life, and we can literally apply this to anything in our life. You either feel like you will always create. I talk about this a lot. You will always create time, make time for the things that are important to you. So if this is important to you, you will make time. Like think of all the things that we do and just suddenly it's just something that we do on a daily basis. It's because... It's important. And when we move the shift of health and fitness to this is important and this is what I'm going to get done, the question won't be, oh, but how do I have time to do it? It'll be just like, okay, so when do I do it? Um, yeah. So I think first and foremost is um, ask yourself, how bad do you want it? Um, if you want it bad enough, you don't need to 
to suddenly create the time in your schedule. It just becomes part of your schedule because you make that so. Um, you know, going on from the question that I was saying before, it becomes non-negotiable and it just becomes part of your day and you see the magnitude and the, and the, the incredible effects that it provides to you and then how that rolls in onto every other facet of your life and suddenly you go, ah, this is actually a catalyst to positive change. Why do I have to make time or make this a chore when this very thing, again, as I was saying, just is rolling into, spilling into other areas of your life and it's just making you a better person. So, again, if, if, if it's something that we can just say to ourselves, how bad do I want it? Like the answer will be there for them. Um, so again, I don't, I don't, um, I don't fluff around on that subject as as hard as that sounds. <laughs> yeah. um, again, being going back to the previous question of being realistic as well. Um, I've pulled away. I used to love training twice a day, six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. Finally, taking a rest on the twelfth day or something. I used to love training like that. And, and whilst that was great, and whilst I had the time to do that or, or whatever that just didn't fit into everything that I wanted to fit in. So it's being being assertive, if you like, for lack of a better word, or being um, like being able to go, okay, what can I subtract out of my days? For me, no longer is, let, let's just say, 12 sessions a week, no longer. that What that does for me and how that transcends into my other areas that I've got to do, that no longer facilitates me. So I've gone, right, I'm going to just start being realistic with just training this amount of time. Um, this many sessions and that's it. So I think people need to be realistic that you don't have to train twice a day. You don't have to train six days a week. You can just train for, or walk or exercise or move your body three times a week. Start with 20 minutes a day, whatever. Just do it. Just, yes. just start somewhere. And, and, I, and I've talked about this before where just start somewhere with what you got, with where you are. Doesn't matter. You don't need gym membership. Just do those three things first and foremost and then it'll slowly just... You know, like anything, you'll just fall in love with it. Next minute, you're training for an hour or whatever, a few more times a day because you've just incorporated it as part of your lifestyle. So start small, work your way up, um, and and the beautiful effect of health and fitness, you'll you'll end up loving it anyway. So regardless, you'll end up doing more. Yeah, I actually, I totally agree with that. You know, like I was actually chatting to someone today who was saying that they've only. Um, or before they started their journey, they only ever wanted to train once a week, you know. And then a couple of months went past and they noticed a change in, in the way they felt and little changes in their body after one day. And they thought, you know, I, I wonder what will happen if I up it to two days. I, yeah. I believe truly in it's not all about all or nothing attitude. It's about making small changes that are maintainable, that are sustainable, and then building on that you know, whether it's weekly or little changes every day. So I can totally resonate with that. And um, I think there's a of incorporating it as well. Like, um, you know, people like to sit on the couch in an afternoon and talk talk to their girlfriends or their mums or whoever. Could you take doing that exact same activity but you just take it to the pavement and you're walking at the same time while talking on the phone? You know, I think that there's ways to multitask and have things in parallel. We call it parallel activity where you're getting things done at once and everyone wins um so you know being realistic having that approach of like okay i'm just going to start small and work my way up we're all we're all not going to be athletes in you know two weeks so it's just a case of <laughs> do what we can where we can with what we've got and and you know it sets up in in good stead for for future movements anyway totally totally um you before you mentioned you know like um you're finding really hard to ask for help and you know at some you have realized lately more so than ever that you know reaching out and asking for help when you need it how is your partner with you know being supportive of the journey you're with with obviously the jobs that you have your training and all that kind of stuff yeah oh um you guys know Dane really well it's he uh I can't do all the things that I do without the help of my other half um it's uh in fact, he's part of my he's part of my reason how I can do all these things, and and I really dip my hat off to a lot of parents and um, and wives and mums that have these incredible support networks where we can literally work as teams, not just 
hey, you're the dad and you just do this. Hey, you're the mum and you just do this. We're seriously a team. And while sometimes we feel like ships in passing and I've talked about sometimes this disconnect in our relationship for no other reason but because we're just so infatuated over our little boy and making each other work um, to make it work and to still be, you know, you know, successful in our sort of own areas of our own lives that sometimes it's like, hang on a second, we need to also um, work on us too. So I guess we've been we've been brilliant in sort of um, applying ourselves to each other's sort of endeavours and, and our, you know, business plans and, and being um, incredible parents, but we've also acknowledged the fact that we're still too, um, you know, life accomplices and we can be team um Parent in parenting, but we've also got to be, um, you know, husband and wife at the same time, and we're still learning that. And I think that's a beautiful thing for us to acknowledge that and go right. What are we doing? How can we reconnect? Um, and and that's something I'm really proud to say that that's what we're trying to do at the moment, which is really really good. But yeah, as far as um, how much support he gives, holy crap! And that's something that I've had to learn to accept as well. Like he will say to me, "Oh, do you need?" you know, back in the day, even when I'm not even talking that this was this long ago. Uh, if anyone that knows or has followed me more recently, I was away for a lot of this year and knowing how much Dane just stood up to the plate and he had to, because I wasn't here for four and a half months and he basically single-handedly raised our child as a single parent um, with me on Bluetooth being like, good night, reading bedtime stories. He literally held the fort for us. And I think it's an incredible thing that now moving forward, that's, parents it's not just mums raising children's children it's mums and dads raising children and it's and it's an incredible thing I'm incredibly proud to be part of this generation of people and that's what we're doing it's no longer mum stays home cooks and cleans Dane gets in he rips in sometimes I'm like you don't even need me I <laughs> so yeah if I if it's any you know whilst I have no idea what single parenting would be like because I have had such a great support network um, I dip my hat off to any single parent that that does these things on the, on them, you know, on their own. And I certainly um, encourage them to, if they do have support, if they do have help available, to take it on because we are a one man. We we are just one person, and we all need help sometimes. And even if we don't apply the word help, but rather just assistance or aid in just simple everyday things, we call them ADLs, activities of daily living. If someone can just get you your jug of milk as you come home and it's already there or whatever, or they've cooked you a lasagna and they're going to cook you two whole lasagnas because it's going to make your life easier for the week. <laughs> really take it on. They're there to help us. Um, if you've got support people, use them, let them in, let them in. There's nothing wrong with it. Let your guard down, let them in. <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. And um, so obviously speaking about your husband, with Madden, your little one, how uh, do you keep him involved in your health and fitness and how do you try and incorporate I guess, that passing on that healthy lifestyle to him? Oh, Madden will be doing muscle ups before he's <laughs> God. Um, again, monkey see, monkey do it. It's an incredibly uh, humbling thing to see your little one literally watch what you do and mimic it to the nth degree. So we've, we're fortunate to have a little uh, um, gym in our garage, and when we're out there, day and I working away, he'll be he'll be there doing the same thing he wants to get. So like next minute, he's getting on the deadlift bars, trying to give it a go. He's trying to double under. It's fantastic. I think there's nothing more. Um, there's nothing that fills my cup more knowing that we're imparting this sort of no. no push by any means of this health and fitness lifestyle. But I'm a firm believer of you are what you are exposed to in the environment that you sort of um, are brought up in. And I, I know wholeheartedly that he'll understand firsthand, not because we're telling him, but we're showing him the importance of yeah. living and breathing health and fitness, not because you have to, but because you want to. Yeah. They're currently. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you hear him laughing? Yeah. Trust <laughs> the, yeah. So, um, no, I'm incredibly proud and it's something that, you know, um, these little people, their developing minds are incredible and, and they're in these soaking brains of just like, oh, my goodness, what are they doing? He, he I don't know if you saw the, um, I did a video where he was literally getting a resistance band and doing, like, crab walks. He, like, yeah. perfect, perfectly. I never ran him down the, okay, so this is what you do and this is where you put it. <laughs> Anne's degree was like a... 
anyway, so <laughs> again, um, I'm I'm super proud to see him mimic, to see him monkey see, monkey do, to to understand that our influence on these little people are incredibly powerful, and we have to cultivate that at all costs because we're raising these little humans and they're our future generation and we need to do that. Yeah, you can see if your lifestyle was the other way, monkey see, monkey do again, like how much of an impact that would have on, you know, little ones growing up and even around food and things like that. So it's really cool to see lots of um, mums out there inspiring their little ones at such a young age. And like you said, not telling them just by literally doing it and then seeing it there you know, going to already have all these benefits from it. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a big believer of just setting the example like you do. So um, like how, how did you, like obviously on the topic of Madden, but how did you find the progression um, obviously from, from being who you were to a mother and did you feel like it changed your lifestyle too much? Like did you find it a struggle to adapt? Um, yeah, so again, no two journeys of motherhood will ever be the same. So if I say I struggle, like how long did it take for me to adapt or how long is a piece of string and my, my ability to adapt will be different to somebody's ability to adapt. Um, it was anyone that, no, I think anyone that knows me pre-motherhood knows that motherhood was the moment I came alive. For, you know, was I, no, in no way am I saying I was a bad person before motherhood. <laughs> but, it just catapulted me in this in this zone of just right. I've got this little person now. I uh, the the purpose and the and the incredible sort of right. I'm here to to raise this intruder, this developing little mind and this little body that's you know um, coming into fruition soon. And that's it was something that moved me really early, really really early. And then when he finally sort of came. I move, you know, fast forward to when um, Madden came into our lives. It was just um, a change for me like no other. Um, when I look at how I was in the health and fitness realm, sort of um, what I was doing health and fitness-wise versus what, um, how I was prior, I've been able to achieve my fitness goals and my, if I want to talk about aesthetic goals, postpartum. Not, I, I like to think that um, some of the physiques that I've been able to achieve post having a baby have far outweighed what I've been able to achieve pre-baby. And isn't that an incredible thing that for a lot of us, people assume, you know, once you have a baby, that's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's it. You know, life's over. Life has just begun. And for me, that was my, my moment where I came alive and motherhood was the single most influential moment of my life that then suddenly... Um, <laughs> what are you doing? Um, so yeah, sorry, what was I saying? So, so like that was the most powerful, powerful um, moment of my existence and a milestone that changed me dramatically. Um, and 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 it's and it, it stems from the fact that you you see your body, you think you know your body until you're pregnant. I'm sure you can agree with with me, both of you, that. Um, your body does all these amazing things and you're like, wow, I can do this. What our bodies are designed to do, this is what I'm doing right now. And postpartum you see it and then and then you just see yourself evolve in these ways that you've never seen. And and suddenly, you know, it's almost like I also think about it from a point of view of when then Madden's older, I see him become a parent and I'm going to see the transformation that he goes through um, when he becomes a parent because I've seen my parents do it with me and I'm sure it's the same with you guys. Like, Parenthood, there's no way to describe it. There is no way to describe it. It just becomes this this, this little person that I sometimes think, how the hell did Dana and I have a child that we've, we can barely, we could barely look after ourselves, <laughs> alone, this little child, but we are and it's become, we can't imagine life without him anymore. So, um, again, if I was to say that my powerful, most powerful moment was becoming a mum and that transcended me into the life that I'm living now, absolutely. And I guess that, that's a choice you made as well, like we were talking about before with positivity, like you made the choice, I guess, you know, postpartum, you get get back into exercise to look after your body, you know, all that sort of stuff. Again, it's a choice that we all have to make and as long as we're making those right choices, anything's kind of possible. Yeah, and there was this, like, newfound appreciation of what this body and these 
female human bodies are able to do. Like it's incredible. Yeah. So suddenly you go, there's, there, you know, the any self-doubt that you had or self-criticism that you had whilst you're like, oh, my goodness, you know, I've got a long way to go or whatever the case may be. You, you, you then, though, look at it at close range and go, I just created a human being. My body just did that. Yeah. And I sort of, I, I, I really um, utilised that in terms of that. That created a mind space for me that I was able to sort of move forward with my health and fitness but take it at a time that was, that was rehabilitating for me. So, again, powerful. So powerful. Awesome. Well, well, thank you so much for all of your time and answering all of our questions. We've loved chatting to you. We, we get to chat with Nadine all the time, which is the best, but we definitely wanted to share it with our followers um, so you guys can get a bit, a bit of an insight into what Nadine is all about and how she juggles all her amazing things in her life and how you guys can do it as well because, you know, sometimes we think we are busy, but like Nadine said, it, it depends how bad you want it and if, if you're healthy is important to you you will find time and you can make it work so absolutely absolutely thank you so much don't forget guys to anybody that is watching um now or you're jumping on later uh nadine's instagram link is in the comments below make sure you follow her honestly i wake up every day and watch <laughs> her stories just to start my day so yeah you will not regret it <laughs> Well, thank you so very much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, you are welcome. So nice when all different people can put together their passions and, and be able to share it with the world. And there's nothing, uh, I think you can you can feel it, you can see it when people are their authentic, real and true selves on here. So it's an absolute pleasure to be a part of it. No, oh, thank you. Thank awesome. you very much. Well, we'll let you get back to your family and yeah. where that will that <laughs> happen the rest of your night. And, um, Hat off, family yeah, time on. <laughs> Have an amazing Bye. night. Thank you. See so you guys. Bye. Bye.